Okay, look at this. 19 set. And it works. Hang on. I haven't got much of an area on it at the moment. Bit of music there. Amazing to turn that off. These um, army surplus wires, they came out what? I think they kind of flooded the, the market in the 60s. Um, I don't know whether they were available in the 50s, I'm not sure. But uh, everyone had a 19 set in the 1960s. Well, any, anyone that was into amateur radio or, or pirate radio, of course. <laughs> and, uh, um, this is a, a Mark III. There was uh, there was a what was there? Let's get this right. There was the Russian version with Russian writing all over it, all the same inside, more or less anyway. There was a Canadian version, British version. This is the Mark III, which is uh, quite nice. It's, unfortunately, it's a bit rough the front panel, and there's a knob missing, but uh, it's quite nice. It's got it's got the later wiring, um, which is is nicer to work with. This is, yeah, it's a bit rough this one. As I say, there's a knob missing now. I doubt I'll ever get that. Well, maybe from somewhere. Um, I was lucky enough to get this plug. Um, I've just put a couple of bits of lead in there. I've got to make up, this is running from the workshop power supply. I've got to make up a proper power supply for it. But um, I was, uh, what was I? I? I just started my apprenticeship at the radio and TV workshop. I was 15. 1966, yeah, that's when I got my first 19 set. In Worthing, where I am, Worthing, Sussex, um, we had GWM radio. You probably heard, a lot of people would have heard of GWM radio. It, uh, Army Surplus, and it was in Portland Road, Worthing. And uh, they had, oh, dozens of 19 sets. They had everything, Army Surplus, they had it. And of course, being in Worthing, just sort of a couple of miles from where I lived, um, I remember I didn't have a car at the time. I went down to the shop with my bike, <laughs> wheeled my bike down there, bought a 19 set and took it home, rested it on the saddle of the bike and somehow wheeled it home. Actually, I was more than, a, probably about three miles from the actual shop in the town centre. And I paid £1.50 for it. That's £1.10 shillings in those days. Uh, goodness knows what they're worth now as I say I paid 50 pounds for this a couple of years ago um, which is not not bad at all it's a bit of a wreck but it'd be nice when it's done yes yeah, so my my wage as an apprentice was two pound ten shillings a week which is two pound fifty a week um, that's when I first started that's when I got the 19 set which was one pound ten shillings so there we are it's a fair old chunk out of my wages <laughs> But um, over the years, I had, I don't know, 12, 15 of these. I think at any one time, I must have had three or four. Um, really, really good. What we used to do was rip these sockets off the front. It was sacrilege now to do that. Little aluminium plate behind each socket. Then you could have uh, build the power supply inside. There's a VHF set. 235 megs that's the B set in there that bit um, what you should do is rip that out and then build the mains power supply in there there's plenty of room for a transformer that sort of thing then the mains lead would just go through a grommet in the aluminium plate at the bottom there the uh, the Morse key socket there make that into a microphone socket also what I did was um, EF86 valve because it had a carbon microphone. So use an EF86 valve as a microphone preamp. Use a crystal microphone with it then. Had to have a crystal microphone. Oh, happy days. Um, there were various other modifications to get a little bit more power out of it. Uh, it covers in two ranges, two to four and a half megs and four and a half to eight megs. So you've got two to eight megs. And in fact, two megs it would just about go below two megs into top band, which is the 160 meter amateur band. Um, so it covered 160 meter amateur band, the top half of it anyway, uh, 80 meters and 40 meters. So it covered three amateur bands, 
which you know was was pretty good. Um, obviously, transmitter and receiver. Um, really, really nice, nice piece of kit. And of course, as I say, this one's a bit rough, but I did have some really you're know, looking like new 19 sets. Um, I don't know where they've gone. Of course, over the years, you know, things disappear. I had uh, different meter in most of mine. This is a round meter. Some of them had a sort of square fascia on the meter, which looked better, I think. Um, yeah, so this is the tuning. This is the, the wave change or the range switch. This is the tuning, and there was a smaller knob there for fine tuning. This is the aerial tuning for the transmitter. You'd switch the meter to aerial, tune that for maximum on, on transmit, which would also peak up the receiver. Um, You've got RF gain as well as AF, ordinary audio gain. Uh, netting switch, what that did, you tune into a station and you could net onto him, you, you would turn that on and tune for zero beat onto the station. So as you tune each side you'd hear the beat and you tune for zero beat. That would tell you that your transmitter is then spot on the station you're listening to and uh, we're obviously about to call. Um, of course I didn't have an amateur radio license when I got my first 19 set. I built the power supply, I got the receiver going and uh, apart from the amateurs I used to listen to a CCF, Combined Cadet Force, on 5.33 megs uh, in new money, that's 5330 kilohertz I think. Um, and it was great you know, listening to them. They also had another couple of frequencies. Uh, basically the CCF was like private schools, public schools that had a, um, a cadet force, a sort of department if you like. Um, and that would get the school boys interested in, I don't know, in the army I suppose, into radio communication. And uh, they were allowed on, I think they had about three or four spot frequencies they were allowed on. Uh, 5330 kilohertz was Delta Oscar. There was Tango Golf, which was just below 5 megs. Um, and of course, they all used 19 sets, or the majority of them, they'd say, were using a 19 set with a dipole cut for Delta Oscar. And uh, of course, it, it was illegal to, to talk to them, so uh, obviously I didn't, didn't do anything like that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on swiftly. No, it was um, it was great, you know, learning uh, a good way to, I mean, I was 15 when I started, as I say, on 19 sets, and I learned a lot about transmitters, receivers, about procedure, talking on the, on the radio procedure, that sort of thing. Eventually, <coughs> of course, got my amateur radio license, um, and then I was let loose on the HF bands, on the amateur bands, uh, legally, which was... I was going to say, which made a change. But of course, I, I never went on illegally, did I? I forgot that. So there we are, the uh, the infamous 19 set. Lovely bit of kit. I th I've seen them these days on eBay, what, £250-ish, something like that. Um, had a separate power supply with it that sort of went there. For, and they ran from 12 volts. Uh, I forget how many amps they drew at 12 volts. I don't know, probably something daft, like 20 amps. Um, rotary converter, rotary transformer and a vibrator unit for the 600 volt HT, that was the rotary, the vibrator was for the 250 volt HT. The meter, you can look at the aerial, aerial current, uh, the AGC, use that like an S meter on received. Then you've got LT, HT1, HT2 and drive. Drive is the transmitter drive. Of course you used to peak that up for maximum. Um, yeah, there were a few modifications you could do to these to improve them, but uh, to be honest, 807 in the PA in the transmitter, um, an 807, yeah, you should be able to do, I don't know what, 30 watts or so. To be honest, I don't think you ever got more than about 8 or 10 watts if you're lucky out of one of these. But um, of course in those days, there wasn't all the interference around. I just had a tune around on here, all I can hear is interference. Um, it would be hopeless trying now. Uh, well, it is on the amateur bands, as I've said in other videos. It's, it's a shame. 
So yes, um, I also used to chat, I mean listen, whoops, listen to the fishing boats because uh, it covers the trawler band, two, well roughly two to three megs uh, was the trawler band. So you've got the coast guard stations, um, you've got the local fishermen, they chat away out there and uh, you know, some people, not me of course, but some people would have a, have a chat to the local fishermen, which was good fun. What I did, I had a Hillman Minx and I had a 19 set on the back seat of this Hillman Minx with the you know the, the power supply next to it running from the, the car battery and the tank aerial these were used in the World War II in tanks mainly in tanks they were in other vehicles you know if you go to these shows military vehicle shows you'll see these in some of the other vehicles but they had a like I think it was a 12 foot uh, whip aerial big base like you see on the tanks and I put one of these on the roof of my Hillman Minx on the roof of the car so I could sit down the, the seafront, I could look out to sea and uh, chat, I mean listen to the fishermen out there on the trawler band. Great fun, happy days, I mean absolutely amazing, it was great fun. And uh, two or three times if not more over the years, um, I was never stopped by the police, but a police car would pull up and they'd say what's all this area then, what are you up to? Very friendly. And I'd say oh look this on the back seat, this is my 19 set, you know. Like, I'd lie a bit. I'm a radio amateur. Well, I was going to become one later, which I did. I was just premature, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, I remember one policeman. He said, "Oh, we," he said, "We'll, we'll talk about your car down at the Nick." He said, "You know, the one with the, the big tank aerial on the top." He didn't say it was illegal. I don't know. I don't know how high you can have an aerial on the top of the car. I don't know. But I remember driving along country lanes, and it would hit. The tree branches and you'd look in the rear view mirror and see bits of your know, leaves and twigs all flying all over the place. Yes, yeah, good fun. Didn't didn't do the car battery any good because on transmit it did draw a lot of current. So that's the 19 set. Yes, uh, this one I've got the receiver going. I haven't got power supply yet. The 600 volts for the transmit side for the 807 valve but um, got the receive side going. Just thought I'd show you inside. This is the uh, this is the 807, the transmitter PA valve. This is the VHF section here. As I say, this is what we used to rip out. Then you've got a nice little room here for the main transformer, the power supply, all that sort of thing there. There's an intercom. Um, I forget which of these valves or, or both do the intercom. So the in the tank the the radio operator can talk to the driver of the tank or the gunner. Uh, I, I think I don't know how many people are in a tank, but um, <coughs> you know, he could, each could communicate with the other through the intercom in this. So yeah, th this is the uh, this is the tuning capacitor. Four gang, because of course it's not only the receiver; it's the transmitter as well. IF cans here down here. Um, quite nice quite a nice nicely built and being the mark three as i said it's uh, it uses this sort of pvc type wiring um rather than some of it here this old cloth covered if i just turn that round you can see underneath these are the relays the uh, 12 volt relays for transmit receive there's the 807 someone's modified something here I haven't touched this yet, but as you, as I was saying, there's some of this cloth-covered wiring, some here, but a lot of it is PVC. Um, so, as I say, the Mark III is the the later one. Um, I'm not 100%. I don't know the the date uh, of the early or the late ones, but um, pretty sure this is yeah, this is a Mark III because it says I think this is the British one. There was the Canadian one. I don't know which is which. Um, I did know back in the 60s and 1970s. I knew, I knew all the, the models, the mark this and the mark that. Uh, I knew the differences. Um, did a lot of work on these. Uh, a lot of work. Yeah, I knew what all these trimmers did. Tune it all up. Yeah, good fun. But uh, this, this one is very nice. It's just that the front panel isn't that brilliant. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll turn it over so you can see the front panel.
there we are that's uh, this is where the the knobs missing which is a shame someone's taken that that was that's the aerial socket that's a pie socket these were made by pie by the way um, there was one there for the VHF set someone's taken that off which is a shame it's just a bit rough it's not these are supposed to be coloured I think red and yellow were they? I can't remember red and blue someone's put silver silver paint on these uh, handles but it's not too bad it, it probably could just do with a good clean up but um, yeah it's just a bit of a shame that um, it's a bit tatty the front panel is a bit tatty there anyway there we are that's the 19 set mark 3 the, yeah there's no there's no date on it I'll have to find out I'll probably find it on the web somewhere look into the date of that one rather nice as I say it's all working I've just got I've got a lot of work to do to it but I have actually got it working on on receive and transmit um, okay I'll show you the carbon microphone Hang on, I've got a carbon microphone I'll show you what that looks like this is a carbon mic that's the PTT press to talk there's no plug on this one these came with headsets I'll just show you that a bit closer there we are that's the carbon microphone these came with um, bashing that on the cabinet now with like a headset headphones uh, and a microphone you know, with all the canvas straps as you, you've probably seen all that on the television um, there was a control box and various all sorts of which I've got somewhere uh, but of course when we used to use these back in the old days we discarded all that um, you know as I say use that as a microphone socket crystal microphone with a EF86 valve in there um, usually a jack socket somewhere for a loudspeaker uh, like well, for, for example there would do take the aerial socket out of there for, for the uh, VHF set plug the speaker in there um, so yeah there were a lot of modifications that you could do to these I think a lot of this is just dirt so there's, yeah just what's cleaning up anyway I won't waffle on anymore that's it wireless set number 19 mark 3 excellent stuff love it when I get it all finished when it's all done and uh, working properly I'll give you a demonstration thanks for watching bye bye for now